Hi, and welcome. The radar mounted in the F4E Phantom II is the Westinghouse AN APQ120, a pulse radar that well suited the necessity of a smaller radar dish to allow the installation of the M61A120 mm Vulcan rotary cannon. Similarly to other upgrades and new tools already mentioned in this series, such as DSCG or Tizio, the ANALQ120 was upgraded through the years. Three main configurations were adopted, at least until the mid-80s. The oldest is the ANAPG120D-V, and it is the basic radar set. It is the aeroplane shown in the footage I am recording in FSX, and uses the older DVST display, or direct view storage tube. The ANAPQ120F-V, is the successor, and different blocks host different features. In general, the Tizio camera set was installed and, in such cases, the newer DSCG, acronym for Digital Scan Converter Group, was used. On top of the DVST functionalities, the display sets are TV capable, and can provide azimuth and elevation drive commands to Tizio and AGM-65 seekers. Finally, the AN, APQ-120 EV-10 and-11, provided the new and improved computer automatic acquisition mode. A dedicated ground programmable computer provided accurate launch envelopes for the AIM 7E and 7F Sparrow, AIM 9P2, 3, and N2 and 3 missiles. Most of the radar controls are located in the back seat, the Wizzo's office. If you haven't already, I recommend checking the previous part of this series, dedicated to air to air missiles and related controls. As the name suggests, the radar set control panel hosts several controls related to radar operations. Starting from the top left corner, we find the radar power knob. Skipping off and test options, we find the standby position. This setting maintains the radar in ready condition, minimizing the time necessary to switch to full operation. It would take circa 3 minutes, in fact, to instead move from off to operate. The standard employment mode is operate, indicated by the acronym OPR. In this setting, the system is fully operational. Emergency is the last option, and bypasses most of the initial delay, and pressure and temperature interlocks. Moving clockwise, we find the polar switch, a three-way switch that controls the polarization, and therefore the orientation of the lines of electric flux in THR electromagnetic field. LIN short for linear, is a standard option, and it is normally used to employ the AIM-7 Sparrow. So one or circular one rotates the RF energy clockwise, and still allows the employment of the sparrow. Finally, so two or circular two, is automatically commanded when the radar is in beacon mode. However, AIM-7 sparrows cannot be employed in this mode, as the waves are out of phase. The radar range knob is straightforward, with the peculiarity that the ranges between 5 and 50 are clearly marked and separated from the values 100 and 200. The reason is that those four initial positions are AI, acronym for Air Intercept. When selected, the corresponding range light is activated in the cockpit. 100 and 200 nautical miles are instead used for search or mapping, but there are some peculiar cases, as we will see later. In DSCG Phantoms, the range is also displayed on the scope. The maneuver switch is a two-position control used to control the tracking loop responses. The low G option limits the acceleration responses to clutter and countermeasures, whereas high G is better suited for air-to-air -air combat. Note that, when CAA is used, high G is selected automatically. The number of bars scanned by the radar is selected via the scan switch. The WISO can either select one or two bars, which is a bit of a shock coming from the eight bars of the AUG-9. However, the radar follows a particular circular pattern in specific situations we will discuss in the next videos, which enlarges the volume scanned by the beams to 6.7 degrees. This volume surpasses 4 bars in the AUG-9. When 2 bars are selected, the volume is 10.45 degrees, which is quite close to the 8 bars setting of the Tomcat's radar. Here is a curiosity, if you follow 10% True, Steve Davies' Discord and YouTube channel, you may have watched the walkthrough of the F-4G cockpit. Since this aircraft is a conversion of the F-4E, some parts, such as the panel we are discussing, have been maintained. In that video, Starbaby mentioned how, in real life, the switch was always set to one bar. I asked him about it, and the issue is related to how, among other things, two bars turn the contacts into intermittent hits, making them harder to spot. 
Away from that, the one bar option is automatically selected in Etherground or map modes. Otherwise, two bars can be chosen, which adds another scan plane, separated by 3.75 degrees. In both cases, the elevation angle is adjustable using the thumb wheel located in the antenna hand control. The aspect knob is used with the AIM-7 Sparrow. A similar knob is located in the F-14 armament panel, but it is not implemented in DCS, due to the game's restrictions. The purpose of this control is feeding information to the Sparrow, providing a predetermined and simulated Doppler value. Rather than actual inputs, the knob is used after the missile tuning, and the four positions between nose and tail allow to lock the missile speed gate in the region of the target Doppler. Y behaves differently, if selected, the speed gate searches the entirety of the spectrum, overriding other Doppler inputs. Depending on the version of the F4E in use, the knob serves the dual purpose of showing different values rather than only the range on the scope, as we have discussed earlier. In particular, the nose position shows the target aspect angle and the altitude, displayed in hundreds of feet, using different time length to discern them. The altitude is displayed for 2 seconds, the aspect for 4 seconds. In other older versions of DSCG Phantom, the aspect is displayed using the nose position, and the altitude using the forward option. The tail position shows the approximated target heading. The receiver gain knob, quite an odd-looking one. It is used to adjust the gain of the radar in certain operations, and it is automatically bypassed when tracking a target. This will be a fundamental tool for the WIZO. The track switch is an interesting one. This three-position switch allows the WIZO to compensate for heavy clutter environment by manually performing radar tracking operations. When set to auto, as the name suggests, range and angle tracking are performed automatically. If the target is maneuvering beyond the radar tracking capabilities, the WIZO can action the maneuver switch to compensate. The manual position sounds like a lot of fun, the WIZO initiates manual tracking and positions the range strobe in range from a closing target, then adjusts the manual V sub C control to match the target video moving range. It is basically something in between Space Invaders and Tetris. The last option is AOJ out, where AOJ stands for acquisition on jamming. This feature allows a source of noise or jamming to be automatically tracked in angles when in search mode. This position of the switch disables AOJ, returning the radar to a search configuration. The display knob controls both the perspective and the azimuth of the display. In B mode, the WIZO can manually control the sweep using the half action on the trigger switch, something similar to the DDD. The difference between wide and narrow is the width of the radar swept volume. Wide corresponds to 120 degrees, narrow to 45 degrees. PPI stands for Plan Position Indicator. They share the sweep volume with the B modes, but there are differences. PPI wide is used along the radar in map mode. Narrow instead can be manually positioned in azimuth by the WIZO, and also provides a range cursor for mapping or bombing purposes. VI, or Visident, functions differently depending on the upgrade of Phantom in use, and I'd rather discuss it later when the F4E is released. Generally speaking, it provides pure pursuit steering towards the target, but there are some caveats. The manual V sub C control knob, or MAN V sub C, is the oddest control on the radar set control panel, resembling the timer of a toaster rather than a piece of avionics of a mean fighter jet. This tool is, however, essential to operate the radar in manual mode. If the range rate is opening, ergo the separation is increasing, the V sub C control is rotated counterclockwise, from position 0 through 2, otherwise the others. As mentioned before, the idea is using this control along the radar set in manual. The WIZO should spotlight the target using half action, position the strobe slightly below the target, ergo a bit closer to the phantom, then use full action. The range is then extrapolated as a function of the position of the range strobe, whereas the closure rate is manually set using this control. The WIZO should carefully try to match the closure with the correct knob setting and make sure that the target video and the range strobe are moving in the same direction. When the correct setting for V sub C is determined, the WIZO should use half to overlap the range strobe to the target, and then press full action and release. Something I noticed is that the range rate indicator has a series of numbers arranged on the outer circle in a comparable manner. If that is the case, this would help to get a feeling of the correct values to input. 
I honestly do not know in what cases the radar in manual mode should be operated, but it sounds like a ton of fun already. We have only three controls still left to discuss in this panel, so let's quickly see them. The pulse switch is a three-position switch that controls the radar pulse width and the pulse repetition frequency. The default mode of operation is auto, and the switch has no function when the radar is in air ground mode. The other two options are long and short. Long allows greater detection range by setting low PRF and wider pulse, but makes the radar less capable of discerning multiple contacts on the same bearing. Short instead is used for AI ranges and has higher PRF. This mode increases detection capabilities at shorter ranges. The skin track light indicates tracking with range locken. If range memory or home on jam tracking are active, the light remains off. The last control is the radar mode knob. This six position knob allows the WISO to select the main radar modes of operation. Each mode also has a number of submodes, but those will be discussed later. Clockwise, we find the BST position or boresight mode. This mode is used in both search and acquisition, and the antenna is set to 0 degrees azimuth and minus 2 degrees of elevation. The idea is using the sight reticle to match the target and then lock it. After this, the fighter can maneuver freely. RDR, or radar mode, enables air to air radar search functions and locken and tracking if the range is between 5 and 50 nautical miles. This mode represents familiar indications to the WISO, such as the aircraft attitude or the elevation strobe. On top of that, the B sweep is displayed. Somewhat similarly to the DDD, this line moves in conjunction with the radar antenna. The radar mode allows the WISO to use half and full action to acquire a target and employ missiles. There are additional submodes initiated, for example, when jamming is present, but those will be discussed in a later video. The next option is Map B mode, and it is used when conducting search operations at low altitude. Since we cannot take advantage of pulse Doppler, understandably, clutter becomes a problem. This mode tries to reduce the issue by concentrating the antenna beam width, which should provide higher target resolution. Moreover, Map B mode overrides other controls, placing the radar to one bar, with linear polarization. Air GRD or air to ground mode provides radar range to non discrete targets and requires a radar range set within the AI bracket, therefore between 5 and 50 nautical miles. This mode allows automatic range tracking by superimposing the radar to the optical sight pipa and then locking as usual. This will make more sense when we will discuss air to ground procedures. Beacon mode is quite peculiar, as the radar displays signals from ground or airborne beacon transponders, providing navigational information. Lastly, the TV, or television mode, is used along the AGM-65 Maverick. It is fundamental to keep in mind that AIM-7 Sparrow missiles are detuned and cannot be tuned when the radar mode knob is in this position. Besides this panel, there are additional controls discussed in previous videos, such as the V sub C switch and the stab switch located in the monitoring panel, just north or the radar set panel, or the antenna control handle. This concludes the first phase of the F4 familiarization series, heavily focused on the instrumentation and the avionics, mostly for air to air operations. This has been a necessary step, as going forward, we will focus on more details, such as radar patterns and nutation radar submodes, for the lack of a better description, and much more. Thanks for watching, and take care.